is exactly what the judge is making me drive through on a daily basis. Here's another vehicle, vehicle right another there. major accident. And there's a vehicle over there in the There's ravine. a vehicle over there. Another major accident. And this could have been me. If it was literally 60 seconds earlier, this would have been me T-boned right here. And now I'm not even sure if I can get home. Judge DeThomas' has the nerve to tell me, well, you're a safe driver, aren't you? Well, I bet the guy who got hit was a safe driver, but the person who actually hit the guy, not so safe. Now, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get home, George. It's, you may other, have to, it's other people's driving. You literally may have to go home, and I may have to sleep at the schoolhouse tonight because of Judge DeThomas's. And let's see if we can get through. All right, we got more showing up. This 60 seconds earlier, and this literally would have been me that got T-boned and would be flown to the hospital right now because of what a judge is doing illegally, keeping me from driving on my own road for my own safety. Seven marriages, seven divorces. There must be something with Otter Creek's own pole dancing minister with that number seven. And wouldn't you love to know what all seven ex-husbands have to say? Fortunately, we know what husband number seven has to say and ex-husband number seven because in Ohio court, he tells the judge, he states he's in the middle of the road with a walker, with a tape measure, I'm not sure what he was measuring, but he states he said, suck my teeny weeny beanie to his ex-wife, Lynette. And my lawyer goes, you said this to what? To who? To your ex-wife? And he says, yeah, yeah, I did. I'm not sure we'd get much more information out of the other six because they probably never had an opportunity to speak around this woman. This woman's mouth never ever stops. She's got something to say to everyone about everything, particularly in court. She told the judge there has never, ever, never, ever been anybody on her property involved with, um, well, let's drop the D and we'll just call it involved with rugs. Do you think they're out there selling rugs? One of the local residents here in Otter Creek actually messages Lynette and says, have you heard about this guy, Chad, who goes by heavy metal? What's the deal with all of these nicknames? I thought we were the ones that come up with nicknames, and apparently not. Nope, nope. Do you think Mary Mary nicknames are scary came up with, uh, with Chad's nickname of heavy metal? Maybe. Could have been, could have been. But uh, Lynette does say he was over here a few days helping John. So right there in the screenshot. There it goes. And... And we've got to put some uh, context around this, okay? Uh, there's a guy, he shows up in town, his name is Chad, okay? And he's living illegally on property adjacent to my property. Actually, my property surrounds all of that property. And it's a known thing that these things happen here. And this individual is an individual that must report where he is living at all times. And you can figure out what that's involving, okay? Uh, he has to report. So you already know what it's re involving. And I'm not going to get into the full details of it. But all the neighbors in the neighborhoods need to know that their children are safe. That's what it gets down to, okay? And so um, they know this. Lynette knows this. Crook knows this, and now he's over on the corner of my property, which is not exactly my property. My property all surrounds the property, okay? And not keep in mind, Lynette has told the judge, never, ever, ever has anybody who does rugs has been on my property. And she, right here, he was over here a few days helping John. Okay, so goes on to say he was over here a few days helping John I thought he was moving around too much but he didn't drink um we'll just call it strong drink uh here but I don't know about rugs which she did know about the rugs he did tell Johnny uh he was going to work for the um oh my goodness can you believe this here we go can, can you even imagine what goes on through these individuals minds Oh, he did tell Johnny he was going to work for the uh, the roaring guy on the corner, which 
On the other corner of the property is another rug house, okay? Um, George and I never in a million years anticipated moving into a, in a place like this with rug houses all over. Never. We had no idea. It was all for a business plan. And the business plan works perfectly. Uh, but being surrounded by rug houses, we don't need that much carpet. But um, suppose it's going to work for the rug guy on the corner for legit work, supposedly. We don't know anything more. Well, so of my count right now, you've got Chad, who is on the property, known individual, has to tell where he is at all times. And do you realize they allowed this man on the property with a child that supposedly cannot be around anybody because she's got a life-threatening metabolic disorder. Life-threatening, can't be around anybody, got to wear mask all the time, which you might have noticed. Lynette has yet to wear a mask in court. Four court sessions and hearings so far, and no mask whatsoever. Nor was John Crook wearing a mask out in the Jeep. Nor was the child wearing a mask. And yet, here we are exposed to all these people, and they literally are opening the property up to individuals that have to report their whereabouts for the protection of children. They are opening their property up to all kinds of individuals who love rugs. I mean, they love rugs. Their life is nothing but rugs. Remember, she said she didn't know anything, right? Except here's the picture of him and the description below in the text. And this is the individual they had on the property with all knowledge. Again, keep in mind, she's in court stating, never, ever has a rug person been on my property. To date, I think George and I, we count seven that we know of, eight, maybe more. Seven or eight. Seven or eight. That well, we know in, of. Including Crook. And uh, we could throw her in there too because she's actually posted, this is how foolish she is. She has posted her tests, which are positive, positive for rugs. And so this is the kind of person that these two individuals are letting individuals like this come in and out, in and out, but then claiming all over online, oh no, she's got a, she's got a life threatening disease and disorder and we have to wear masks everywhere. Do you realize these two can't even live up to the own, their own storylines that they've created for the world online and they forget it all the time because it's lie after pathological lie after pathological lie. This is also the individual that John Crook pulled out a firearm on after a town hall meeting. Her words, not ours. These are the words of Lynette. Lynette, Michelle, as a matter of fact, um, so here's another discovery that we've just come up with. Guess whose middle name is Michelle? Remember the victim's advocate, Amanda Martin, who then changed her profile to Faye Moss, which she's absolutely Faye Moss now, and she has that Faye Moss middle name, Michelle. It is Amanda Michelle Martin, whose husband is a deputy as well, which hopefully he sees uh, the insanity of her even getting involved in this and how she did wrong. And frankly, she should be a part of the consequences for what she's done. So we've got uh, Lynette Michelle. We've got Michelle McCain, the underwear bandit. We've got Amanda Michelle Martin, the advocate who's not uh, very advocacy. Uh, what other Michelles Jamie. do we have? We have ja who? Jamie. Oh, yes. Jamie, S Jamie, Michelle, Star, Johnson. Okay. Uh, we will get to Jamie in just a little bit as she was another rug uh, connoisseur. But this says here, so John just had to do something here. So Chad just attacked John. I seriously doubt it happened that way, knowing these two. September 8th, 2022. So Chad just attacked John. John pulled a un. John pulled a un on Chad. Well, hold a second. She was also in court. I realize you've seen the hearings. She has told the judge, the judges, that John has never, ever, ever pulled a nun. And yet, here she is in her own text stating that he pulled an un. So Chad just attacked John. John pulled an un. Uh, 
and I had to call the sheriff. And we just found out that Gail is allowing him to live on the property to take care of Susie. All right. <laughs> oh, boy. Here we go. How do we unpack this mess? All right. So you already know who Chad is. Uh, Susie is on the corner, which my property surrounds, where things happen, such as rug sales. And I'm not too thrilled about it, but again, it's not my property. And if it's not happening on my property... It's their property. Mm -hmm. They, 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 they live the consequences for their choices just like everybody else. And they don't have children with so, life-threatening uh, Yeah, there's no four-year-olds that aren't potty trained. I suppose to actually potty train a four-year-old, you would have to have a potty first. But, you know, I, I, I get it. Um, no life-threatening issues there. Maybe it's just recreational. Maybe it's medicinal. Uh, we do know it's happening there. We do know it's happening on the property. Again, they have removed any issues on my property that I had with them and whatever happens on their property happens on their property. Uh, everything has been civil between myself and Susie ever since. Everything has been resolved with encroachments and dumping and so I get what she's saying and now Lynette is attacking Gail, my neighbor up front as well that my property surrounds um, and attacking Gail stating Gail's letting this person stay there. Okay. So here's the first thing I have to, you know, my mind goes to whenever I read something that Lynette has written. She's a pathological liar. She's an absolutely pathological liar. Now, number one, she is telling the truth about who Chad is and what he's done. Number two, she's telling the truth about what happened with Crook. And uh, there's many more witnesses to that. Not a, not, you've got one of the Hard, uh, Hudson sisters. You've got Gail. You've got, you've got Gail's nephew there are other witnesses to that happening okay it absolutely did happen i am not the first individual in otter creek that crook has actually tried to share his un with uh and remember crook loves to share um his un well with others buns here we still have the illegal sign right here on the property here we go Still have, still have the illegal sign. Here we go. This is a long one, and in case you're wondering, uh, who's going to be our star witness, our key witness in court? It's going to be Lynette. <laughs> she continues to lie, and yet we have thousands and thousands and thousands of screenshots of what she has said, not only in public posts, but in text messages as well. And so our star witness that we're calling to the stand is Lynette, who states, they're accusing John of giving people pills around here. All right, there we go, giving people pills around here, and giving Kenny, that would be Kenny Jr., rugs. Now, if you recall, when we first got to Otter Creek, and if you don't recall, you can go back and look through our entire playlist of Otter Creek from the very beginning of when we've gotten here to where we're at now. Uh, Kenny Jr. was part of the problem dumping and selling rugs and also destroying one of our cameras uh, right out in front of uh, where this is all talking about in front of Susie's. Then it goes on to talk about rugs and dugs right here. Uh, Doug's all to get him to shut up. I can't, I can't, I just, I can't claim to understand the, uh, the instability of a mentally unhinged individual as she writes. So she doesn't write. She okay. talks to text. Uh, or as she talks to text. Okay. So around here, giving Kenny rugs, Doug's all of this to shut him up from let him up from trying to get rid of them people. Okay, here's what I think I understand. That Crook and Lynette were trying to get rid of the, the rug dealing on the corner. And yet, at the same time, the very first rug addict that they brought in on the property was Kenny Jr., because they watched our videos and the issues we'd had with him. And so they brought him on the property and then claimed that he stole from them. 
as is the same story that you get with everybody they let in on the property. Let another rug dealer or a rug buyer on the property, then they claim victim and claim they stole from them and stole everything, including a tortoise. All right, so, but they think now uh, they're accusing John of giving the people pills around here, giving Kenny rugs, Doug's all this to shut him up, let him from trying to get rid of them people. This, uh, da, 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 da. he told John, all right, there you go, right there. He told John that we're all red. He told John that we're all red. Apparently Chad or Kenny Jr., one or the other. He told John that we're all red. So now I have to protect myself and my baby. I'm not taking my gun off at all. I mean my un. I'm not taking my un off at all. Okay? Uh, right there. She's not taking her un off at all. And... Um, and this resident says that he, whether it was Kenny Jr. or Chad, I'm not sure in the context, do you Chad. know? It was Chad. It was Chad. Mm -hmm. He threatened to burn our house down. And then Lynette goes on to say, yeah, I remember that. But they this, still allowed him to come on the This is the property. person they allowed to come on the property. After knowing this, this is the person they allowed to come on the property because they were looking for cheap labor that they would trade for rotten food and rugs. Okay, so yeah, I remember that. Well, he got away with it because he said, this is the whole thing with John pulling out the un. He got away with it because he said John swung at him first in the truck. He never said John left the truck, but because he said that John swung on him, they had to, meaning the sheriff, they had to either arrest John, right here, they either had to arrest John, so this, these are her words, all her words, we only shared the facts with you, that's it, this is a news story, it's the story of our lives and we share the facts with you, whether a judge wants us to or not. And he says they either had to arrest John or take him both to jail and we could press charges or we just had to let it go. So since she didn't want old Johnny Crookie to go to jail, uh, apparently they just let it all go because it was either they both get arrested or nothing happens at all. Then on September 8th, she's states this. It's about a waiver and John starting fights, okay? Well, that's the rest of the text. So, yeah, I remember that well. He got away with it because he said that John swung at him first in the truck. He said, oh, so you mean it's the rest of the... Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So, I'm getting I'm getting this... I'm, I'm at the news desk right now and it's beep, 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 breaking news. I'm getting it as you're getting it. Uh, George has had all of it. Uh, John swung at him first in the truck. He never said John, da, 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 da. We could press charges or we just had to let it go and sign a waiver. They had to sign a waiver, apparently, with the sheriff from this whole incident. Had to sign a waiver saying we weren't going to press charges on him. No, no. What you're going to do is just see if he'll come back and work for rotten food that you were giving away illegally. Because when a gift in kind, and that's what food is from Win dixie when a gift in kind, it's either a monetary donation or it's called a physical gift, is a gift in kind. Okay? This is fundraising world. If I gave this to somebody, that'd be called a gift in kind. And so when you are given a gift in kind, it must be used for its intended purpose. If you do not use it, for its attended purpose. For example, if when Dixie said, you can have all this rotten food, but it is only for the turtles, and then you go and give it to the uh, rug dealers all over Otter Creek in exchange for cheap labor, number one, you incriminate yourself because you're a 501c breaking the law. You're not using that gift in kind for its intended use. But then you are also incriminating when Dixie if they get sick, if they get ill. And we have texts of them feeding it all to the child as well. If anything happens, when Dixie is screwed. Remember, 98% of Otter Creek residents apparently love Lynette and John Crook, according to Lynette's latest poll and post in regards to the Otter Creek residents. Yet right here, Gail was right there. And now she's got some things to say about Gail and Michael, who are across the street as well. Uh, well, Keep in mind, she also told the judge in court that she is the only neighbor I have. Okay, 
Uh, let's see. There is Brian and Tina, which they're horrible neighbors. There's Gail, who is a wonderful neighbor. Michael, who's been a wonderful neighbor. I've got Susie and whoever's on her property at any given time, which all of those issues are resolved. I've got neighbors on the other side of me, which are uh, our hunters, our hunter friends. Uh, I've got people across the street from me. That would be Tommy is right there at the corner across from my property, which Tommy's been great. There's another individual that uh, nobody, well, George and I haven't met. Nobody really sees him all that much. He keeps to himself. Uh, then you have Lynette and Crook, who are absolutely horrible, horrific. They are the worst of the worst. Uh, I got more than enough neighbors, and that's just talking about one piece of property. If I jump over to the school, Russell's my neighbor across the street, unfortunately. And I've got more neighbors. I got tons of neighbors. Okay, so... She's talking about my neighbors. Gail was right there with them. And she's going to start attacking Gail. And she says, she, meaning Gail, is defending Chad. So right there she's saying, she's defending Chad and so is Mike. And that's Gail's nephew, Michael. They alleged that John hit him first from the truck. John is a... Bass. Uh, is, is a pass. Sea bass. He's a sea bass. John is a sea bass. So now she's mad because the neighbors that in court she claims I don't have, but they exist in her text that the neighbors are actually defending Chad because John started with him. So this is going to be interesting in court. Do I have neighbors or do I not have neighbors, first of all? And then when we use the text to prove that I have neighbors, does John start stuff or does he not? Well, the neighbors are all ready to testify that John starts everything. And so does Lynette. Um, but according to her, this was this was wrong. This was wrong on Gail's part. This was wrong on, on Michael's part. Because they allege John hit him first, which John did. Everybody knows that. There was more than enough people there. Okay. And 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 then she says, once John starts, he don't stop. Ah. Mm -hmm. uh, you mean you mean so pulling up on my property and trespassing on my property and then uh, antagonizing and and stalking me to my property. Uh, she's right. He doesn't stop. And the only thing that's going to stop these two is prison. He did say touch my Jeep and see what goes bang three oh, times. Oh, he did. He did say three times. And uh, a judge, well, okay, okay. Lynette says we fraudulently, we fraudulently got civil protection orders in Ohio. Um, I'm not sure how you fraudulently get civil protection orders, but um, very clear as day is his own video. His own video, which is so freaking funny that everything these two do further incriminates themselves. It's as dumb as Russ the Sus and Don the Con going out in front of town hall, holding an illegal meeting, planning it, and having another moron come and film it. That's how dumb these people are. Just like Lynette running to the courthouse, writing my name over and over again, and then a forensic expert saying, yep, I can compare it with the posters. That's how dumb these people are. They further incriminate themselves and further incriminate themselves, and they think they're geniuses. They're geniuses at being dumb. I've got to frame this next one in context for you, okay? So this is Lynette taking a screenshot of her conversation with another female messaging John asking for rugs. So Lynette actually screenshots, she screenshots her conversation and then sends it to the resident, okay? So to put this in context, so you completely and totally understand, Lynette is telling the resident of Otter Creek exactly what she said to this individual who's writing John for rugs, okay? And now this is what she, Lynette, sent to the lady. And it says, stop it. Stop it now, and I mean it. I'm so not kidding. You will not do it again, or I will blast it all out. Oh, Lynette, what's she going to do? Call the local news? Every time she calls anybody... She says, I'm going to call the local news. Remember when she contacted our mayor up north? If he doesn't talk to me right now, I'm going to call the local news. Have fun. You, you Her think, email to the Ohio mayor was evidence in Ohio court. She, but it's somehow it's so, fraudulent. Yep, so fraudulent. Apparently so fraudulent. Um, 
And then she says, I'm going to be sending back your envelope and don't ever tell you and don't ever do it again. I'm telling you, even when he tries to get with you again, don't because I will go to the police. That's the bottom right there. Okay. A couple things that we need to understand with this. All right. Number one, there were some very, very derogative uh, messages in Facebook Messenger. And this is Facebook Messenger. That's part of the message. We will get to the other part of the message. But this Facebook Messenger, very derogatory in regards to what Lynette has said to others about myself and George. Calling George a sand... um, We don't need to go any further than that. Calling me a happy man... Uh, and we don't need to go any further than that. Talking about GPS trackers and talking about throwing nails all over the property. And one of the things she said in court and, uh, and posted online, she has never, ever, ever used this font. Now, just so we're on the same page, because this is evidence, this is the exact same font that she sent to this woman and then took a screenshot of it and sent it to a resident of Otter Creek. The exact same font that was used in all those messages that were sent to somebody else calling George a sand, you got it, and me, happy, and you know, all those things. And their conspiracy to commit a crime. And um, so, which is it? You've never, ever used that font before? Or you actually took a screenshot of you using that font and then sending it to the residents? Obviously, the font has been used before. And obviously, she's a pathological liar. Even though in court, she tried to tell the judge, he calls me a psychological, a psychosis, a something. It starts with a P, but it sounds like a sigh, like an S. I'm a liar. He calls me a liar. She could not come up with pathological liar. It's amazing that a pathological liar can't come up with the word pathological liar. So, again... She's telling this woman who's asking for rugs from John. Via envelope. So she wrote John a letter to the P.O. box. Mm -hmm. And then she says, I will be sending back your envelope. Don't you ever do it again. I'm telling you, even when he tries to get with you again, don't because I'll go to the police. And then she's sending all this information to the local residents. Let's take a peek at what else it has to say. I will go to the police and I'm telling you that right freaking now. (sighs) All right. Uh, Oh my goodness. I can't wait to show the full deposition. How many times she goes up in the camera. (sighs) She would jump at the camera. It was, it was, it was, it was odd. It was, and, and I don't say that word often enough. I should have stayed that the, I should have stated that the other way. Even when he gets out of the hospital and you try to hit him up again, it ain't gonna happen. Do you think she was snapping her fingers as she was t- she was typing this out, mm-hmm. or no? Three she, snaps she was in a talking circle. it. She was talking to Texan. It ain't gonna happen. Three snaps in a circle. I don't doubt that at all. So again, you've got uh, so how many how many rug individuals do we have on the property so far we've got kenny jr Mm -hmm. we've got chad Mm -hmm. that we know of that we've we've shown so far we have crook Crook. all right that's three so far and there's more per the usual lynette can't keep her mouth shut and she actually sends messages about what this female sent back to the resident of otter creek and yes this resident will be a witness in another (laughs) If, if any of the witnesses get any time in court to actually give testimony because Lynette won't be able to shut her mouth. Do you think she's going to be up on the stand and go, I plead the fifth, I plead the fifth, I plead the fifth, I plead the fifth. Yes. Or is she going to go, mm-hmm. and bear those gums. Okay. She says to the resident, you should see the nasty but very stupid message I got back from that. Oh my goodness. Please, please learn English. All right, let's try again. You should see the nasty but very stupid message I got back from. That she admits to exactly what she's done and calls me a bunch of names and tells me to go to you know what myself. You got the highlights there, okay? And then it goes on. John in turn sends me a text message screaming at me on how I shouldn't have done that to her, poor girl. Well, why does Lynette care? 
Lynette has claimed over and over in court and documents, her and John Crook are not together at all. She's lonely. She's bored. They're not together. They're not a thing. They live they, in two separate They live things. in two separate living dwellings, which is part of CPS case plan. They split them up. She's living illegally in a shed. No plumbing. No AC. It's, it's insanity. It's insanity. All right. But then John is in the hospital because he's got septus of the brain and in turn sends a text message screaming at her. So I'm not really sure. Did she run to the courthouse and file an injunction then? Oh, huh. I wondered. Do you think she did? Do you think she ran and got that injunction with all these with all these rug dealers all over the property? Do you think she ran and got that injunction? With... <laughs> oh, wait, no. She's she's disabled. She can't run. Come on. She can barely stand up. She can't carry anything, right? She can't sense the sarcasm. She tells the world she's disabled, she's getting disability, mm. and she still does anything and everything. But she's on Channel 20 News. With Channel, she on called Channel 20 News. Called Channel 20 News. I'm disabled. I want Otter Creek. And they cut every clip of her but out. She's holding the child on her hip <laughs> if you're 100% disabled. She was so mad. She was so mad they didn't use any of her clip. It was so funny. All right. So somehow she knows that John is screaming at her. And I should have done that to that poor girl. People in this world are just plumb stupid. I'm taking back what that devil stole. You think I'm joking? What that devil stole. Um, you know what? What's plumb stupid? I, I don't know what a plumb stupid is, and I don't know what you stole either. So... I learn more about the English language every day. And there are a lot of times where George and I make up words just for fun because we have senses of humor. Mm -hmm. But this is intentional. This is intentional stupidity. What that devil stole it. Okay. All right. Took I took I also <laughs> come on. Oh my goodness. Up top. Took I also took to drug and rug dealing. Took I also took care of the rug dealing that's happening now on the corner again. That's going to be cleaned up real quick. I'm not going to clean it up my own area, but I'm going to clean it up everywhere. Did you just re I'm not. Oh my goodness. Okay. She's admitting right here. I'm not only going to clean it up in my own area. She's admitting it right here. Constant rug addicted individuals on the property. Rug dealing on the property. And now she's going to she's gonna clean it up in her own area. But I'm going to clean it up everywhere else too. Everywhere else too. Okay. Is she DEA now? Apparently she's DEA, but yet has not filed for an injunction whatsoever. So what does she do after this? Uh, there's many others. We've looked at three rug dealers so far. Let's let's get a little reminder of what happened to the aspiring um, adult star, Jamie Star, when she brought a stolen camper on the property. And I was driving down the road on the phone with George. This is what was taking place. I'm now also dealing with Jamie. She's accusing me of stealing things out of her camper because... Things were stolen, evidently, when they took her camper. You know what? You bring what? a stolen freaking camper to my property. I could have went to jail. I could have lost my oh, child. The not. last thing, <laughs> thing I freaking care about is the deporting <laughs> shit that you picked she up doesn't out kiss, of goddamn she doesn't dumpsters cuss. and brought to my property. Doesn't cuss. It went to the dump, and that's where it is. And I'm not going to deal with her anymore either. I've had enough threats from her today. Did she run to the she's courts? Lucky she's I wonder. Maintain her children Did she get an injunction on Jamie? On meth so bad that they shoot, uh, shoot rounds off, trying to scare somebody that's not in the walls of her camper. I shouldn't have children. Just pulled out of the drive. Autistic ones. On the phone with George when this so, happened. I'm at my end, guys. I, I am stretched as far as I can stretch. How insane! I'm, I'm stressed out. I'm trying to 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 feed the tortoises, get enough money for cameras. I'm trying to do all of this oh. and maintain my cool and take care of this baby. Do you know my baby fell asleep? Well, most do. At about 5 o'clock. Those are called and naps. she's still sleeping. Yeah, well, that's called she's a nap. She's stressed out. She's tired. You would stress, stressed out. You would she stress anybody tell. out. Okay, so, 
Uh, all right, enough. So, so we're now showing um, a rug user and addict number four, as Lynette has stated in court to the judge. Judge Thomas says, "There's never, ever, ever, never, ever." Okay, well, there's well, prior, four. Prior to Jamie were two other ones. Well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. So now um, you you realize that Lynette is our star witness. Like, literally, she's our star witness. She has absolutely no credibility in the court. She will have fraudulent. no credibility. It's 100% perjury. We're already pursuing perjury charges, defamation charges, and the list goes on and on, and sanctions for everything. And again, we are at $61,000, and this is all for list of what she's done and therefore we're going to go after getting all of that back from her and we can go after her lawyer as well. September 10th 2022 it's a long one and you know how she likes to rant on. I just had a long chat with a sheriff on the drug task force. Hmm. Maybe they should actually put a little uh, outpost right there on her property. Sounds like it. I mean they all come there. And I forgot his name, but I'm so mad right now. When they talk to the Chad Chad, is this like Stuart Stewart? Now it's Chad Chad. Mm -hmm. This place, this place, Otter Creek, man. It changes people. Oh my goodness. They start doubling up their name. Next thing I know, I'm going to be Jeremy Jeremy. You're going to be George My George. brother is George George. So, well, Otter Creek. We know how it happened. It must have visited. Uh, so when he hit John the other night, the people with him saw... Some fat little chicken. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> she talking about who I think she's talking about over there in Elsie. All right, let me let me back up. Okay, I just had a long chat with the sheriff on the drug task force. I forgot his name, but I'm so mad right now. When they talked to the Chad Chad, when he hit John the other night, the people with him, some fat little chicken, other people I don't know exactly who all alleged that I'm a rug addict and John is a rug addict. Okay. Right here, above my finger, that I'm a rug addict and John is a rug addict. Um, pretty, pretty, pretty accurate assumption, considering that she's already sent texts calling him a rug dealer. Uh, but you know, maybe, maybe, maybe she was lying about that too. Who knows? Let's find out uh, that I'm a rug addict and John is a rug addict. And, and remember, 98% of the people in Otter Creek love them. Just love them. You, you want to know where to get the best rugs? Okay. So, that we're, and that we are selling rugs on our property. Um, Jeez, I can't believe it. I mean, this. that envelope says it all. I pretty the much request say the envelope. envelope. Pretty much. All right. That we're selling rugs on our property. And that maybe they're selling it out of the camper or the shed. Who knows? We're selling rugs out of our property, and every time I say this, it reminds me. Remember the rug dealer that we would drive by uh, when we would go to your sister's, and I would be like, man, someday I want to be a rug dealer. And they would bring a van out and put stands out, and they're just rugs. I'm like, man, <laughs> just find a random spot. You just sell rugs. <laughs> Dr. Like, rug. His name was Dr. Rug. We should start call, calling Crook <laughs> Dr. Rug. Okay. Um and, all right, the fat little chicken, okay, da-da-da, they're alleged I'm a rug addict, John's a rug addict, that we're selling rugs on our property. And something about, there's something that was said about the hardly not being mine. I think that has something to do, the she child. wrote hardly, H-A-R-D-L-Y, not being mine. That I stole the child, that I'm too old to have a child. Where did I get her? Because he asked, this is... The police, right? Mm -hmm. This is the police With asking her. the drug her. task force. This is the drug task force asking her, where did this child come from? Now, I hope you all understand that this was not a normal adoption. There's no way Lynette could have went to an actual adoption agency. She would have been disqualified immediately. We have the adoption paperwork. She lied on the adoption paperwork. She lied about her background. She lied about uh, all of her criminal charges. She lied about everything, okay? And this was during 2020. She, she conned and scammed another individual. And this is a meal ticket. The child is a meal ticket. Is money to her. Not a loving relationship. Money. Okay? And it all happened during COVID and it was through Zoom, through the courts. It was a private, a very private, not through an organized adoption agency. She knew she could never, ever go through an adoption agency. They would check everything. And... That's right. another story. That's for another, another story time. for another time. 
All right, and so this is the drug tr task officer asking about all of this. Did she, because the Levy County Sheriff are going, did she steal this child? They're still trying to figure out how in the world this woman got this child because these two are unhinged. Uh, that I stole the child or I'm too old to have a child. Where did I get her? Because he asked me if I could ask some very personal questions and please not take offense to it, but were questions that he had to ask in this investigation. In other words, Drug Task Force was investigating Lynette and Crook and wanting to know where in the world this child came from and how they got their hands on this child and all the drugs, uh, rugs, 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 all the rugs that are, that are uh, being uh, supplied through the property. And, um, and I'm the one who called them, is what she says, to tell them where Chad was living and keep them informed of what is going on because I really want to get this under control. But what I was really, really, really not happy with was the questions. So I told you I'll drop AUA for you. I'll drop AUA for anyone. I don't know what that means. I don't, does anybody have any idea what this mental person is saying, AUA? I'm going to drop AUA. Awa. I'm going to drop AUA for you. I'll drop AUA for anyone if that's what you want. I don't have a problem with it, said. I'm an ordained minister. <laughs> this is no joke. She's telling she's telling the drug task dude that she's an ordained minister. Who doesn't preach. Who doesn't preach or teach. No kidding. She has no concept so of what God's word So why bother mentioning says. that? So why would you say you're an ordained minister if you don't preach or teach? I have a full Bible college degree. I've gone to seminary. I don't preach or teach. What was the point in even sharing that? There was none. Exactly. So why does she say it? I love my daughter with all my heart. She's special needs, and I want a quiet place to raise her. Except, if she wants a quiet place to raise her, you have to ask the question, why does she continue to stay with Crook? Why hasn't she filed an injunction on him yet? If he's that abusive, if he's, he's rug dealing, why is there no injunction? And if she wants that quiet place for a child, why are all these drug users, everybody who wants a rug, they know where to go, coming in and out of the property? Why hasn't she filed an injunction on Jamie? Why hasn't she filed an injunction on Chad? Why hasn't she filed an injunction on Kenny Jr.? Why hasn't she filed an injunction on Kenny Sr.? Why are there no injunctions for the real issues for this woman, if they are real? This just in, breaking news on WTH, your favorite news channel. Drew, who was talked about in the text, was arrested for none other than... Oh, he messed up. He messed up big time. And he worked at Winn-Dixie, who then got the backdoor deal for all the rotten food illegally. The manager of the store never knew that these two, Lynette and Crook, were actually getting this. It was all supposed to be sent to another place, not to them. So the guy who was giving it to them did it illegally. She never had a contract with Winn-Dixie, and he's in jail for none other than meth. The rug users keep adding up and adding up who's been on that property.